Hey guys, in this video I'll be going over Sonic Academy's Kick 2, which is an awesome kick designer. I'll be doing this tutorial in two parts, so let's get started. So here I have Kick 2, which is set up in my MIDI channel called Kick 2, and I've basically put in a four on the floor kick rhythm. I'll just play for you guys right now. We see that we're currently in the default mode, and in this first part of the video, we're gonna go over the, the sub-control portion, and we're gonna go over the graph area. I'm just gonna go over different elements of each one of them, and in the second video, I'm gonna go over the clicks and the other processing that goes on in this VST. So, here we go. Now, I have, as I said, I've set up on the default. We see right here that we have an option to solo the sub, to mute it, so we're only hearing the click that's on top of it. For this part, I'll just mute the click so we can just hear the sub. We have option to control the volume, to flip the phase if necessary, and we see on this diagram right here, the phase flips. And we have the option of adding the key track on. And what it does is, according to what note, it's basically chosen in the piano roll right here, it goes to that note. If this is set to G, and I've picked a C, relatively it'll go to that note. So that's the whole concept. In my end, um, the way I work with this is I just turn the key track off. Like that, I'll be able to tune my kick sound right here and be done with it in terms of tuning and having it for the track because the track has usually one key and we're gonna stick to that, right? We have options to choose also presets, but before I talk about that, we have also the ability to choose the panning. Now, for your sub sound, just keep it center. Of course, you don't want to you don't want to pan it to the left or the right because it's one of the heaviest sound. It's one of the sounds that carries the most weight in your mix. So, you don't want to push it, lean it on left or the right. It might also cause a lot of like stereo issues as well, and it just doesn't make sense for dance music, anyways. So, going back to the the presets you could pick, it's just basically modeled after different types of sounds. Like if we were to click on it, we have different types of kicks. We have skins, the drum skin, tom emulated subs, and different waves. We can also choose to change the pitch right here. If I was to raise, every number that you see here raises the pitch by a semitone. And the other way around, goes lower and lower. Right, So we also have the option to add harmonics to the kick. Right now, there's only the main fundamental harmonic that's drawn in. I could decide to draw in other partials in the sound at any velocity or at any amplitude that I want according to whatever I want to do. And right now, we won't really hear a difference. And if I were to raise the harmonics, we would see these partials being added to it. We also see that the shape of the wave, both here and here, changes. For regular, well, when I say regular, for any deep house music, I would just tend to craft it without using the harmonics. But if you want to get a bit more, I could say original, or you might have different ideas to layer different types of sounds. And this will help you in terms of sound designing your kick in a certain way, right? Always remember when you double click on something, it goes back to the initial setting, which in this case is zero. For the pitch as well, we we'll go back to the center. If it's panned to the right, I would double click it. It goes back to the middle part. Now, going to, moving on to the diagram stage of things, we see this diagram that we see is the pitch. We're able to lengthen or shorten the kick sound. We're able to move the nodes. We could add nodes, additional nodes if you want. Usually the last two notes kind of dictate the sound, the, 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 tune, the, the tuning you're going for, or the key you're going for. In this case, if we're, they're both on G, the tail is on G, it's going to sound like a G, it's going to be a G note, right? These two notes affect the note of the kick less, so but you can still play around with it if you want a specific type of transient. We also have access to the amp, which is the amplitude of the sub-control only 
excluding the click sounds. Now, if I was to raise my first node on the amplitude, we're going to see we're going to get a rough transient coming through. If I want a softer sound, I'll just reduce this a bit, which is usually what I go for. If you want more body, you keep this raised, you could also reduce a bit of what's happening along the timeline of the progression of the sound. See, it's much, it's much softer right now because I've reduced a lot of the amp, the amplitude along the timeline of each kick hit. So we can play around with it. It's always cool to make sure that you're killing it off almost at the end of it because if you were to leave it open, it's going to get pretty muddy in terms of one kick's sub tying in with the next kick that's coming. And every time there's a kick that's coming in the mix, that carries a lot of energy. You don't want to drown the mix by having too much kick sub happening. Usually about, for, for the Deep House type of music I do, or in general, Deep House, Tech House, House, I wouldn't want to have a kick that's too long or not even too short. About this six, 700 millisecond length range is good, which is close to like one eighth of a bar. It gives room for everything to settle back in before the other kick comes back in right away. So these are the two, I would say, important elements in terms of uh, sub-control and then the diagram on how to tune and how to control your amp according to what type of vibe you want out of your kick. So this is about it for part one. We are going to move into part two uh, pretty soon and I'll be going over the rest of the information. So see you guys soon.